a phenomenal woman who is certainly known for her relationship and love for the African continent, and of course, a woman who has certainly been a groundbreaker and a shape shifter. Let's take a video introduction, perhaps for those of you who might not be familiar with Naomi Campbell, as to getting more insight into her story. Let's pay attention to the screens. A supermodel, philanthropist, and cultural innovator, she has graced the world's most prestigious runways and the covers of more than 500 magazines. Born in London, she was the first black model to appear on the cover of Time magazine, French Vogue, and Russian Vogue, as well as the first black model to appear on the cover of British Vogue magazine. In a first ever Forbes Women Africa interview, Naomi Campbell shares her journey on the African continent, her views on South Africa, and what lies ahead in the next chapter of her life. Indeed, being Naomi, certainly taken from the YouTube channel that you've uh, recently started in sharing and engaging a lot more with audiences more closely. Well, I, I actually, good morning, first of all. I'm very honored to be here in Durban, South Africa. And when I was approached to do this YouTube, I was, I have been approached many times to give my life to television. And I thought, no, it wasn't right. But what I liked about the YouTube is that it can engage audiences. The reach is bigger. And I care so much about reaching the continent of Africa. So that's why one of the reasons that I took it. I'm very happy I to hear that to do response. It. Exactly, because it does speak to the digital age and using technology to reach and tap into new markets, Naomi. Firstly, I think I need to compliment you on behalf of many of the women in the room regarding your headgear. It is fantastic and tied properly as Ikia or Idugu, as we see many of our own African mothers doing. And that certainly speaks to the relationship and the love that you have for the African continent. For many who still perhaps view this as this dark continent, one that is only known for extractive industries and values, why do you still continue to maintain your relationship with the sub-Saharan African continent? Well, when I first came here in 93, I, you know, I didn't know much about the ANC and I was explained about it by a great length by a wonderful actor called Blair Underwood who then took me to a meeting of an ANC meeting and I suddenly felt, oh, I, I'm here working, making a lot of money and I felt that it was wrong. Anyway, I donated that what I made to the ANC and the next day I was asked to go meet the great president, late president Nelson Mandela, who I call granddad. And meeting him, he, I, I didn't quite know why he wanted to meet the rebel girl, because that's what I was like, why do you want to meet me? And, um, and what can I do? And he really showed me a side and the world that I didn't know, and a side that I felt committed and compelled to wanting to help and to make awareness for as much as I can. And since his passing, I really thought, now what am I going to do? Because this was a man that I would run to in times of exhaustion and need and just knowing that I was safe. And so, um, it then came to me that now would be the time when I would know what it was that he wanted me to do and it would come to me clearly even more than before. And my passion and my drive is to help the great continent of Africa be where it should be, get what it deserves to have, like everywhere else in the west of the world. Education here is I've met, I mean, for me, in my life growing up, the most educated people I've ever met come from Africa. The strongest women I've ever met come from Africa. Sure. 
I thought you were about to continue on that one, and you're quite right, the opportunity that does exist on the African continent is profound, and you mentioned education, and I know that education of the girl's child is something that is very critical to you. Well, we have to keep girls in school. We have to keep them in school. We have to keep them educated so that they can learn a skill, get proper jobs, and get, grow up and be independent. We don't want them to rely on anyone. And, you know, also, with working with um, UNAIDS, it's, you know, I know the numbers, we lose 50 girls each day from HIV, and across the whole sub-Saharan continent, we lose 460 get infected daily. So we need to also teach in the schools about being safe, about protecting oneself, so that we can lower the numbers on this continent. Naomi, I think for a lot of girls or, or individuals who might be sitting in the audience, they must be intrigued uh, by your own personal life and your story and your journey and how that's evolved over the years. Uh, you mentioned the focus on young girls, educating them and of course them uh, looking at new evolutions of themselves. And I want to actually touch on the evolution of Naomi Campbell. Okay. We all saw your strut coming up the stage and of course it remains impressive to date. But aside from your modeling career, aside from the influences that you've tried to drive in art and culture on the African continent and your philanthropic work. Explain to us within the context of being a woman why evolving and changing is something that's pertinent and possible to actually do. For me, modeling has been a blessing in my life. I'm very grateful. It led me to meet the most amazing people. And, but I just, you know, where I'm at in my life today is to use the almost 33 years that I've been in this business to help make awareness, to help open the minds to the brands that I work with and have worked with for all these years, that they need to know that they need to come to this continent, not just come in and out and take, but to instill in the infrastructure and make a commitment to the communities in Africa. And clearly that means you can become anything you want, when you want, and continue to evolve. Well. I'm not someone that keeps my mouth closed, no, and I think all that people know that about me, and it's when it's not for me, it's easier for me to ask. But I will, and I am at this point right now where it's quite evident in the world that the African continent in a whole, in my business of fashion, in tech, and many other actually businesses have been ignored. And what we need to know is that we, you, change the perception and the narrative of this country. It's up to you all here in this room today to make sure that the right message goes out about your continent so that we get the opportunities just like everyone else. Indeed. Very critical that that messaging takes place. I do want to touch on uh, some of the work that you do, not only within philanthropy and of course uh, UNAID uh, in trying to foster a culture of awareness across the continent. But as you mentioned, fashion is one of those elements as well that you've been working on. Recently, we saw local South African designers like Tebe Maguku interacting with Anna Wintour and engaging on exchanges regarding African prints and design. What have your successes been like in these ex engagements and exchanges of African designers? Well, today I'm wearing Marianne Fassler, who I love. Oh, fantastic. And I got to wear Marianne um, I, did, I produced The Global Citizen with Kwaku Mandela and Hugh Evans in December, and I got to discover these wonderful designs and colors, and I, I was like, I wonder, I'm coming to Durban, and I really would like to wear you again. And um, for me, the workmanship, the textiles, this is what we need to keep on the continent. We cannot allow other brands, designers from the West to come in and take your textiles. This is the beauty. And that does speak to the protection of intellectual property, which we had in our one-on-one -on -one interaction with the minister earlier this morning. Uh, Naomi, having said that, I think all of us want to know your, your, your personal fetishes, perhaps, if you would choose an African designer over well, Dolce & so Gabbana. Many. There's so many. I mean, I get to be a part of a great event that we do in Nigeria, which is coming up in April, which they bring in over 100 designers from across the continent. And through that, called Arise, I've been able to see the workmanship and the, meet the most amazing talent 
Now, I was last week in Paris at the LVMH Prize where they had three, one South African, one Nigerian, and I believe one from Cameroon, designers from Africa, which warmed my heart. What I want them to see is the textiles that goes into it. It's not just the cutting, the tailoring, it's the fabric that they make. Yes. And so for me, that puts them at an advantage. Exactly. And this also speaks to the economic contribution of new sectors and new spheres, which essentially is the underpin for today's conference, where new wealth is what, exactly what we're exploring. How new women... wealth for me means, you know, giving back. Everyone gives back in their own way. Um, I didn't know that I was giving back. I didn't know what this word philanthropy meant in 1993. I never heard of it before. For me, it's a word that's been used only recently. All I knew is that I liked the feeling of being sent out by Madiba and going to see people that I could put a smile on their face, even if it was for an hour, of being with kids that were dying of leukemia or whatever is rare disease, and knowing that I could just give them something, and that something was time. So it doesn't matter how you give back, but for me, giving back is wealth. That's the wealth to me. Giving back is wealth. Yes. I understand, Naomi, you'll also be interacting, as you say, spending time is something which is quite important. You also had the opportunity to spend some time with youth from KZN just yesterday. What was your interaction like, and what key messaging did you hope to leave them with? Yesterday. Yes. Where was I? Uh, you interacted with some youth from KZN, or perhaps it's going to take place today. I think it's today. today. After today. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you going to share with them? I'm very, I mean, I'm very... I think I'm a kid myself in many ways. I'm very, you know, I like to hear what questions they want to ask me. I answer most of the questions, um, what interests they have. I mean, they're getting to be with me, so I really want them to ask me what they want to know from me. And I'll answer always to the best that I can. And that speaks to something important, that engagement and feedback, actually understanding what it is people want to know, and then from there you can address it. I know what I want for them. And that's what I've said on the stage today. So let's hear what they would like to know more from me. Looking forward to that one. I think there will be ongoing updates that we'll see in that regard. But Naomi, we know that the African continent also is part of a global community. And Absolutely. A global community that you have access to as well. From your engagements and what you've seen across the world, essentially, and various parts of where we interact or your interactions take place, how is it that you see perhaps the world can learn from us as Africa to uh, bolster the performance and participation of women in economies? I first think that, you know, for me, when I think, okay, it's making this continent great and to the best potential that it can ever be, but it's also bringing out the talent and bringing them to the West, to Europe, as well as so that they can experience and learn and in, uh, excel in their skill, to uh, if, um, perfect their skill. I feel like it's a very difficult time for women. It's, it's harsh out there. So therefore, we need more than ever to support one another and to make sure that we help each other get to the positions that are needed. If we're qualified for a position, that diversity shouldn't stand in the way, which we all know that it has done over the years. If we deserve to have that position, then we need to fight to make sure we get that position. Naomi, and I do know what that's like. Exactly. Yeah. The, 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 the facing the opposition and perhaps not being the initial fitting uh, dynamic. Into but I also know how great and what an effect we have on the economy in the world. Our influence on whatever we like it creates a stir around the world. And it's like the rest of the world and consumers want that. So our influence is so powerful. And you're getting to see that now with the stories that you've heard in the past few weeks of the fashion brands. Exactly. Something that does have a significant business contribution. But I, I do want us to actually come back to the focus that we initially started with, which is today being International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and to you, Gugu. And to you, Naomi. Thank you. What does that essentially mean to you? It's a day that, I mean, I really think we should have more than one day in a whole 365 days of the year. We do so much. We are hardworking. 
we make the world go around. Behind every successful man, I do believe there's a success, there's a woman that's right behind him, keeping him going. I do believe in that message, absolutely. And are there women, I know your mother, according to some footage I've seen on your YouTube channel, has played an instrumental role in your career by allowing you to be free and to choose a career path that actually works for you. But are there other women who have influenced you specifically? Well, there's many great women. I mean, I was, I was very, very blessed and lucky enough to meet Miriam Makiba when I came to South Africa. I didn't know her story, but it was just her presence. Winnie Mandela, Michelle Obama, I mean, I've met many powerful and strong but inner strength women, and I'm very much attracted to women of strength. You learn from them, you take from them, you observe them, you watch how they speak, the messages they give to the world. And basically, you know, for me, I'm always considered myself a work in progress. I'm always learning. I like to learn. Yes. Work in progress. I've Absolutely. heard you comment on that before, that you've constantly developed and changed over the years. But if you could go back to your 20-year-old self, walking the runways of New York with any designer willing and happy to actually dress you up, what would you say to her? My 20-year-old self? Um, well, I might have stood up for diversity earlier, but I wasn't sure. I, wasn't, I was aware of what was happening to me, but not what was happening in general. And so um, I probably would have opened my mouth earlier, but it's better late than never. And um, I, um, I don't have any regrets. I feel that my career has been a career of stepping stones. It's not been something I got all at once. I've had tremendous support from designers and people in my community that would put themselves and jeopardize their own careers to help me and I will never forget that. And basically to be here now, to be in front of you all today is a huge privilege and honor. And I would never, I actually thought I would only work for like 11 years because the life of a model was only for 11 years. So here I am 33 years later and I'm extremely blessed and grateful. On that note, what does the next 33 years for Naomi Campbell look like? The next three years, as I said, my passion and my drive is to see this great continent of Africa be where it should be. So that's where you're gonna see me coming back and forth, if not in South Africa, in other parts of Africa, but I will be coming back and forth a lot. And, you know, it's having to, even to bring people here for the first time to see that they can open their eyes and to feel the culture and to see what's going on is important so that they feel the sense of safety because we have this perception where people just feel this continent's not safe and I don't feel that way. I want them to feel the buzz and the inspiration that I feel each time I leave here of all the exciting and wonderful things that's happening from fashion, tech, business, sciences, you know, in uh, uh, real estate. In real estate, a variety of interests, maybe even the Blue Oceans economy, which was an earlier panel today, it talking was. about uh, exploring the opportunities on our shoreline. And of course, I think this great continent of Africa is sustainable and has always supported sustainability, so it needs to be also re-recognized more for that too. Naomi, I've asked you about women who've influenced you. I've asked you about the younger version of yourself. I've asked you very briefly about the future version of yourself. But I do want you to speak to the ladies in the room because all of us come from various backgrounds, a variety of experiences as well, but perhaps have common stories and experiences that we hope to share. How do you encourage us to take this message beyond this whole room and continue to participate in either philanthropic projects, but making sure that the goal and the objective of attaining gender parity and woman empowerment is a priority. I think the message again is simple. Like I said, I feel that each and every one of you in this room makes a difference. You are all young leaders. You are all in here that have a voice and you have to use your voice in making that difference and changing the narrative so that we in this continent can then receive and get what we truly deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, Naomi Campbell. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much thank you. for your feedback and your time today. We certainly appreciate the feedback. We certainly appreciate your time and appreciate the impact that you're having on the African continent and certainly wish you nothing more but the best.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Naomi Campbell, ladies and gentlemen, please give her a warm round of applause as she makes her way off the stage.